said, you know, you 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 did that CEO thing. It didn't work out well for you at TVT. And one thing I love about your story is, you know, as a CEO, you banking on everybody else, meaning you yeah. banking on TVT to distribute your records. You banking yeah. on Gotti to deliver you an album, Chat to deliver you an album, Skinny Pimp deliver me an album. But you, yeah. I mean, you, you was like, nah, like, like the, the one person that ain't gonna fail me is me. Ooh, and it, 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 it feel like you went back to the one person that you know is going to grind harder than anybody else, yep. is going to put the work in, yep. and then you turn into the artist and, 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 and come out with that So Crispy. How'd that come about? Um, I was uh, trying to find what my lane would be, you know, in music. Uh, at the time, Jeezy was doing Trap or Die. Of course, Gotti was doing the cocaine music and, and that vibe, and I wanted to do something that would make me stand out. So um, I decided to like, you know, I had a clothing store back in the day, being fresh and having clothes and talking about style and swag and all that or whatever, like that was always part of my vernacular anyway, like that drip. So um, so for me, I saw a lane there and just, and that's just my first single that I did, my first solo song was called Respect My Fresh. And that Respect My Fresh song, it just started that whole drip wave, like that whole like swag wave that, that started coming out of that 06, 07 vibes. And um, and that song, plus his other song, Stunner Frames, um, about wearing my sunglasses at night. Um, those two songs just just broke, you know, and they got they were spending in LA and Felly Fell was playing it and and it was just starting to get around or what have you. So I was able to secure me my own uh deal with Universal. Um, where I produced like 14 of the songs, they they did too. So I got the production budget, artists advance, all the whole thing or whatever. It just put my own play together, and um and did that. Then so Chris became after those songs or what have you. So we went down to uh, work with Playing Skills because they had the song Riding Dirty for Chameleon there that was signed with Universal. Ah, shout to Playing Skills, very talented, very talented guys. So I went down to Dallas. And we uh we cooked that up together because we went down there once and I kind of played the bat and let them produce me. And we've turned the song into Sylvia Ron. And she was like, it's okay, but let's go back. When I went back, I was like, all right, guys, let me just turn y'all on to what I do. So it's like we co-produced the thing together, came out with so crispy. We had the hook and the beat from scratch. I love making records where we make the beat from scratch. Even now, I like going to the studio creating the beat and then making the song, you know what I mean? Like all together. I think that's why you, when you produce that for an artist is more like a production for them. And um, so we, uh, we did that. And then when we saved So Crispy, we saved it faster than it was actually originally recorded. So when I went, got the uh, CD from the studio, I was like, yo, this is faster than what, uh, than what we, than, than the playback. Cause uh, we saved it in the wrong version of Pro Tools. I think it was at the time. Anyway, I liked how fast it sounded, you know what I'm saying? And 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 that sped up version of it, I, when I got to Atlanta, I went to Jason Jeter's crib and I was like, yo, uh, Jason Jeter manages T.I. and the started Grand Hustle and all that. So I took uh, the song to him. I said, here's the version I recorded. Then this is the mistake that happened. Here's the faster version. He was like, you gotta go with the faster version. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It was like that mistake in uh, making that song have a sound that was dope, and then I ended up turning that into Sylvia, and she was like, yeah, this is the one we're gonna roll with. So we smashed out the album, and just pretty much, the album was called Due Season, um, because one of my favorite scriptures in the out in the Bible is if you're reaping due season, if you faint not, you know what I mean? So, um, much like the season we were talking about earlier. So um, I put out an album that was kind of about my story and about just swag and drip and that whole thing. And it was like, in, in talking about tech, technology and tech game and like how being ahead of the curve on just don't tech and how cds were going to play out and all that i just a lot of things i was selling that gentleman was kind of ahead of his time and it was so ahead of his time that i remember buying magazine writing the album that was like this dude was talking about swag music like he's trying to start his own lane of music i don't know we don't know what he's talking about just drip after that sean everything that came out was swag like you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> So it was like it was, but it was one of those things where I was like just a little bit ahead of my time. I think with the uh, with, with where I was going with the stuff, you know what I mean. But it's definitely been appreciated to this day because it continues to stream and do its thing to this day. But it was like, uh, and then it was at a time where the music industry 
kind of with making that transition from physical CDs to actual DSPs. So it was a funny time to come out, you know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, it's still the experience was dope, and I got a chance to, you know, really make more relationships that made my independent hustle even more harder or whatever. So um, it it was dope. I I really enjoyed the time being able to be like you know um signed to a major label and then having that whole thing because i got honest I, I got a chance to learn things that i didn't know prior to it so and once you get that experience like you can be smart but if you don't have the experience with your smarts you won't have wisdom you know what That's i mean right. and for me it's like I, I i love wisdom wisdom looks better on you than anything you can put on any jewelry any watch any necklace any chain any 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 clothes anything you can pull up in wisdom looks better on you than any of that so just getting that wisdom in the Bible said above all things, get wisdom. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.